Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Pydantic models. We're going to be installing Pydantic, creating our first model, working with it, and then we're going to work with the typing module to actually get some advanced types for our models in here. So in the previous lectures, we talked about Pydantic models, how they work, and how they're really important to fast API. And I'm just going to do a little demonstration of how to use Pydantic models. Now keep in mind that when we get to creating our applications, the models are going to get quite complex. So it's really important that you understand fundamentally how to create these models. So the first thing you need to do is actually install Pydantic. So in one of the articles, we talked about installing pip. So now all you have to do is go pip install Pydantic. Now I already have it installed, so I'm not going to install it, but this will install it for you. Now Pydantic is structured around one core class, which is called the base model. And it's basically how Pydantic extracts all of your class information and uses it to create its models. Now we're going to be using class inheritance to actually create our own models and just basically use Python classes to work with Pydantic. So what you can do is go from Pydantic, import base model. Base model is that core class that all that Pydantic uses to work with all of its models. And now that we have it, we can actually go ahead and create our models. So the way that this is going to work is using basic Python classes. We're just going to create a class, call it whatever we want, and then use inheritance in Python to take from the base model. So we're just going to create a normal class. Let's say I wanted to create a model for a user. So I'm going to say class user. And in brackets, using inheritance, we type in base model. And there we go. Now we have the basic structure of our model set up. Now here's where we go and add in our data properties. We're going to use type hints to actually create these, and you just create one on every line. So for this basic model, I'm just going to go with a username and a password. So I'm going to say username, which is the field, and then the type hint, which we're going to call it a string, since it's going to be a username. And then you type in a password, and then this is also going to be a string. So you can do this with as many concepts as you want. You can use integers, you can use booleans, you can create as many fields as you want, and they will all be classified under the main user class. Now we don't have to be simply restricted to single value types. We can also use all sorts of other different type hints to create specific, uh, specific fields using lists and dictionaries and all sorts of stuff. Now the way that we're going to do this is using the typing module, which is actually separate from Pydantic. We can import stuff from it and use it in our Pydantic models to create these models. So the way that you do this is go from typing, and then you import whatever type, hint, idea, or concept, or tool that you want. So I'm going to start off with something basic, and I'm going to use list. So from typing, import list. It's capitalized. Now what we can do is use this in our type hints. So the way that you create a list of elements to store under our one of these properties, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one, and I'm going to call it likes, is you type out the typing tool that you want, which in this case is list. And then inside, you can put in whatever type that you want. So in this case, let's say I want string. What this is going to do is basically say likes needs to be a list of strings. And it's going to classify that under our Pydantic model. And when we're using it in FastAPI eventually, it's going to work like that. There are also some other options that we can use, such as dict. So if I wanted to maybe change likes to something else, and I wanted to maybe include the number of likes and map it to a post, I could say this is supposed to be a dict. And then in here, we type in the two values we want, the first being the key. So I'm going to say it's a string and the second one being our value. Let's say it's int. So now it's going to tell Pydantic that this is supposed to be a dictionary with strings as keys and integers as values. Now there's one more thing we have to cover with typing, and that's the optional field. So what we can do is add optional in here using our imports. And this will basically allow us to actually set one of our fields as optional. So let's say I didn't want a password for whatever reason. Now, of course, this would probably never happen in practice, but just for demonstration, let's go along with it. All I have to do is type in optional in here, and it will set this to optional. Now FastAPI will understand this, and when it's using your model, it'll actually allow your password to be optional when you're using this model. You can also set default values using the simple equal sign. So if I just wanted to set it to none, for example, it will do this. 
Now keep in mind that none is kind of a wild card with these type hints, it can go under anything, so don't worry about using it if it's not a string or an integer or something like that. So that's how you use default values, and that's the majority of our classes done. But there's still one more thing to cover. We can actually inherit from other Pydantic models to create new ones. So let's say we wanted some admin user, so I'm going to say class admin user. Now this is just a normal user, but it also has a couple extra properties that aren't included in a normal user. What we can actually do is inherit from another Pydantic model, so in this case our user. And in here we can type in whatever we want. So I'm going to say admin password, and I'm going to call this a string for example, and it will work fine. So you can inherit this as many times as you want, and you can make your models as complex as possible. Now direct inheritance isn't the only way to use different models together. You can actually use Pydantic models in other models as a type hint. So let's say in here I wanted to create some random model, I'm going to call it class comment for example. Now this is just going to inherit from the base model, it's totally separate from the user in terms of a direct inheritance tree. And I'm just going to give it some random value, I'm going to say author string. Now let's say each user has a list of these, so I can say comments, define a new field, and let's say I want a list of comments. I can type it just like that. Now the type won't actually recognize unless I put this above the user since it's reading from top to bottom, but you can see when I do that, this works perfectly fine. So what this is basically telling Pydantic is this comments field in our user is going to be a list, and each of them is going to be based upon this Pydantic model, which can be even more complex than this. It can have descriptions, it can have other fields, it can even link to other Pydantic models. So this can go as deep as you want it to go. And all of these Pydantic models and inheritance and trees and all of these type hints connect together to create this one massive ecosystem of models. Now keep in mind that the majority of our models aren't going to be that nested. It's going to be kept pretty separate. It's not that going it's not going to be that crazy, but it's still really good to understand how it works. So that's the basic of Pydantic models. Just to recap, the base model is what Pydantic uses to take all of these type hints and these fields and combine them into its models. You can define hints by typing in the field in here and then your type hint that you want. You can use model you can use tools from the typing model, or sorry, module, to actually specify some more specifics about the type hints, so that's how you can create dictionaries and lists. You can inherit from other Pydantic models to create new Pydantic models like we did here. And you can also use other Pydantic models as type hints, just like we did with our comments.